Well, the primary indication would be pain and uh, not just pain that has recently started, it's pain that's fairly well established, activity related pain and pain that isn't really responding anymore to non uh, to pharmacologic treatment that we'd often instigate initially. I would generally see patients who have fairly advanced osteoarthritis in their knees. Most uh, GPs will manage them, at least in the initial phase, with medical management predominantly, general advice about weight loss and things like that. The main imaging I would make my decision on would be a weight-bearing x-ray of the knee or both knees depending if both are symptomatic because very often patients have the condition in both of their knees at the same time with one being worse than the other uh, but a weight-bearing film would be the primary one I'd make my decision on. MRI we see a lot of patients with MRI scans uh, coming to my clinic um, it wouldn't be my primary imaging modality in deciding whether or not somebody needs a knee replacement but for instance if a patient has symptoms of locking or instability or other things going on in the knee uh, there may be a role for MRI scans but the primary decision as to whether or not somebody needs a knee replacement would be made on a weight bearing film. Well, certainly early arthritis is readily managed non-surgically. So just because somebody has a diagnosis of osteoarthritis doesn't mean they automatically need to see an orthopedic surgeon and be assessed for joint replacement. The primary non-surgical management things, in my mind, I separate them into uh, non-pharmacologic things and drug treatment for, for osteoarthritis. General advice about weight reduction, um, modifying their activities, uh, muscle strengthening exercises can all help the patient's symptoms. Now they're not going to reverse their arthritis but they certainly will help their mobility. Some people use shoe inserts, lateral wedges into the shoe to offload the medial compartment may have some role. Um, and then when those modalities are failing uh, I look at drug therapy then things like anti-inflammatory medication, paracetamol would be the first um, long established safe drug moving on to over-the-counter anti-inflammatories and then prescription anti-inflammatories. Long-term use of those can be problematic because a lot of these patients are elderly, they have comorbidities, cardiac issues and renal issues. So long-term use of anti-inflammatories can be limited in, in that role. But certainly early arthritis, short courses of anti-inflammatories are very beneficial for patients. Injections are commonly used in arthritis. The knee joint is a superficial joint. It's an easy joint to inject either from the medial approach or the lateral approach just under the patella. Um, the drugs we would commonly inject would be a combination of local anesthetic and steroid uh, and more lately um, hyaluronic acid derivatives into the joint. Uh, the steroid and local will immediately deliver a high concentration of drug to the inflamed area and virtually everybody will get some relief uh, from that technique but it's usually short-lived and self-limiting and we tend not to recommend repeated injections uh, perhaps three times a year would be sufficient uh, in terms of injections the hyalur hyaluronic acid technique is um, it's a newer drug that is a cartilage derivative and it's meant to help lubrication inside the joint. Again, it's done quite commonly with mixed results uh, from my perspective, but I'll certainly find patients at least like to discuss injections and many will have an injection prior to uh, being assessed for a knee replacement. Well, certainly when I meet a patient, um, I like to explain to them the magnitude of the surgery they're getting into. I think a lot of patients will know people who've had it done but really don't have a good insight into how big an operation it is. Some of those patients may have had an arthroscopy uh, prior to being assessed for a knee replacement but the level of surgery is much bigger than a day case arthroscopy procedure. 
I tell them it's important. Uh, I like my patients to do what I call prehab, which is exercising and strengthening the muscles before surgery. Uh, a lot of patients will also need to make arrangements for their care after surgery. Some of them are quite elderly. They may need to look into family support or nursing home care after surgery. So all of these things would be discussed. Uh, a history of any medications they're on. If they're on any anticoagulant medication, we usually stop that prior to surgery as well. Uh, but by and large, I think the important message I'd like to give patients is that this is a big operation with some potential complications of infection and need for surgery in the future. Implants can wear out. Implants sometimes need to be revised. And I'd like to discuss all of this prior to uh, embarking on surgery. Yes, all my patients uh, uh, will have a pre-op assessment and there is a pre-operative assessment clinic run primarily by anesthesia who uh, will take a medical history, check the patients over, see what comorbidities they have and ideally try and optimise the medical management before uh, surgery. Many of these patients are elderly and many of them have medical comorbidities that uh, are, on, are on multiple medications. So all of this needs to be assessed and optimized. Some patients are on anticoagulant uh, medication that would need to be stopped because most of the surgeries we do are done under spinal anesthesia. So if patients are on warfarin or drugs like that, they need to be stopped usually about uh, a week to two before the surgery. And uh, all of this would come up in pre-assessment clinic, further tests such as ECGs, chest x-rays, that would be carried out pre-operatively uh, on all the patients routinely in, in these hospitals. Not every hospital will have a pre-assessment clinic, but I think it's now becoming a much more commonly practiced uh, exercise. Well, I think of these into early post-operative uh, management and later management. So immediately post-operatively, um, patients brought to recovery, go back to the ward. Nowadays, with spinal anesthesia, um, we will mobilise a knee replacement on the day of surgery if they have it done in the morning or the following day if they have their surgery in the evening. Uh, they're seen by physiotherapy and they're shown exercises to do in bed uh, to increase uh, muscle strength and rehabilitate the muscle early on from surgery. So initially we're working on early post-op mobility, range of motion and decreasing swelling in the leg. Uh, lots of patients will have ice packs placed around the surgical incision to help post-operative swelling. They'll all work on quadriceps training and they'll also work on straight leg raising. Mobilizing them, doing the stairs happens during their initial inpatient stay. And most patients would be in hospital three to four days after a knee replacement and then let home. When they go home, things are obviously a little bit different. They lose the support of the hospital network to a degree. But they're all advised that if they have any wound problems or they have any concerns, they can contact their surgeon or the hospital for advice. Um, generally speaking, we like the patients to continue with their mobilizing. So get up, get walking. They'll use crutches at home and in hospital. They'll be shown how to use them. They'll have done the stairs while they're in hospital. So if they live at home and the house has the stairs, they're usually competent to get up and down the stairs. Uh, by week two, most patients are mobilizing quite well. Some of them will have decreased to one stick or a crutch and the surgical clips are usually taken out at about two weeks post-surgery. By four weeks post-surgery, most patients are mobilizing around the house without walking aids and uh, outside they'll probably use a, a walking aid such as a stick or a crutch for another couple of weeks. But by and large, once you get to six weeks, most patients are mobilizing quite well. Certainly, most patients in hospital will use crutches and sticks, uh, two crutches and two sticks, and they'll need that support uh, in the hospital, teaching them how to use the stairs again. 
And when they're discharged four to five days after surgery, they will continue using those. Usually at the two week mark, when the wound is healed up sufficiently, uh, patients are advised to go down to one crutch, uh, certainly around the house, and if they're outside the house, um, two crutches. By the time I see patients at six weeks, most of them will have progressed to one crutch uh, outside the house at that stage. In terms of flying or driving, generally when patients are walking around comfortably uh, without walking aids in the house, usually at four to six weeks, I say they're okay to drive. I usually tell them to go out early in the morning in a quiet area and practice before they head off down the main road. Um, and flying, likewise, I would have no problem with patients at the six week mark uh, going uh, flying, provided they're up and able to walk. Um, I usually discharge my patients on aspirin for about six weeks following surgery to minimize chances of DVTs. And patients will continue to wear the TED stockings at home, usually for about six weeks. Uh, uh, at that stage, I tell them to discontinue all of those modalities and get them back uh, walking normally. Yes, is the short answer to that question. It depends on the types of sports they were doing before surgery. Uh, certainly low impact sports like swimming, I'll even let patients play tennis. Um, I don't really have a problem with that. Uh, spinning, etc. That's fine. I probably would try and talk patients out of going back to jogging or long distance running uh, because I think that repetitive loading of the implant will have an adverse effect on the lifespan of the implant. Generally speaking, most patients' knee replacements will be working uh, 10 years down the road. 96% of knee replacements are functioning quite well 10 years after implantation, provided it went, it was a straightforward, successful operation. So, uh, and the implants have improved over time. The, the types of polyethylene spacers we use are now much more robust and much better able to take the loads. Uh, but repetitive running, probably I'd try and talk the patients out of that sport. Certainly, uh, knee replacements can be uh, revised. Um, it, the indication for revision surgery really depends on why the first implant has failed. Uh, for instance, has it failed because it's been implanted for a long, long time and the components are beginning to wear out or loosen? Or perhaps the patient unfortunately had a complication such as an infection. In that case, a revision may be indicated as well. Um, so certainly, certainly the figure of 96% of knee replacements functioning well at 10 years stands up to scrutiny. Uh, implants will wear out eventually and will need to be revised and, and can successfully be revised. I would generally say to any patient that a revision implant probably won't last as long as the first implant that was successfully revised. And equally, if, for instance, a patient is having a revision for an infection uh, following surgery, the results of that surgery are a little bit more unpredictable than the index procedure. Uh, but it's a commonly performed operation. And I think as patients, you know, if, if you're implanting, uh, doing a knee replacement on a, a younger patient, you by and large tell them up front that this implant probably will not last your, your lifespan and you probably will be looking at least one revision in the future and just let them know that before they decide to have a knee replacement at a young age. The indication doing it in, in a younger person is the same as an elderly person in the sense that if non-operative course has failed, the patient has a lot of symptoms, the patient isn't really tolerating medical management, well then certainly it's justifiable in doing a knee replacement in a younger patient. But I would always let that patient know that he's likely he's going to need or she's going to need a, a revision knee replacement at some stage in the future.